Sorry about that. Good afternoon again, everyone. Thank you for attending our Why High Tech Multilayer PCB Features Add Cost and Processing Time webinar. My name is Ryan Wood, the Content Marketing Manager here at Epic. Uh, before we get started, I wanted to let you know that you'll all be muted during the presentation. If you have any questions as we move along, please enter them into the questions panel located in the webinar control panel. We will try to get to them at all of them at the end of the presentation. If we don't have time to go through all your questions, we'll be sure to reply back to you by email. Also, we will be recording this webinar and we'll post both the recording and the slides on our website and YouTube channel. Uh, our presenter today is Angie Brown, our PCB product manager here at Epic. Angie has over 40 years experience within the printed circuit board industry. After having spent many years in the manufacturing of PCBs, she turned her focus to cam engineering and has worked on processing thousands of data sets. Angie also has a production background, proven to be a successful combination in helping to improve every manufacturing process. As the PCB product manager, Angie acts as the main resource for Epic's printed circuit board product solutions. She works closely with customers to assist in their PCB designs to help improve or resolve any data or technical issues. Additionally, Angie oversees Epic's entire CAM engineering team to verify a seamless transition for all orders from the time of the quote to final production. Angie also works closely with our engineering, quality, and sales teams on various circuit board related projects. So without further ado, I will pass it over to Angie. Thank you, Ryan. So welcome again, everybody. Um, let's get started on this webinar on a beautiful Friday afternoon here in Massachusetts. I would like to go over a few items and an agenda, PCB uh, base cost, common cost address, specialty processing not as common, additional time needed in production, and some of the least common specialty processes that we don't see often, but they do add cost and lead time. And then we'll wrap it up with a summary. So base pricing of all printed circuit boards, because they are a built to print product, they're all unique. So how do we calculate the base cost? What are the base cost considerations when you're starting the pricing process? So they all start the same way. We look at them for the layer count, which is all copper uh, electronic layers. So we don't calculate the solder mask or the silk screen. The XY dimension, so this is the longest dimension in the length and the width. So if your PCB is not perfectly rectangle, we will take the longest dimension in the two directions. The material typically FR4, um, and we look at what the copper weight is of that material. The overall thickness of the PCB is the total thickness from the top to the bottom uh, usually it is measured over solder mask and metal plating. Some of the time it is just measured over the metals that are exposed. And once in a while we're requested to measure it over the FR4. The classification can start off with a class two, class three, ITAR, domestic, military, or medical grade we're all looked at at the beginning of the pricing. And then of course, your surface finish. If we only have these items above, we can then calculate the base cost of the PCB. So common cost adders that we see more frequently of a PCB have become more and more frequent in as we move towards robust compliant and technology PCBs. So some of these features that are added to the base price that we just spoke of are copper weights that are above two ounce or mixed copper weights. We see more three, four, and five ounce requests these days um, in order to price that kind of material out we have to know the quantity because they do cost more. 
So that would be the quantity of PCBs that you're looking to order. Very important for all this pricing. Um, impedance controls, where control dielectrics specified by you are involved in the drawing. Uh, we would look to see whether the materials fall in line with the overall stack up and the thicknesses. And then we would calculate some impedance to be sure that we can meet that price. Rojas finishes, everybody knows that Rojas is when you are getting the lead out of the PCB, that's pretty much the only non-compliant Rojas material involved is lead. So when you add emerging gold, emerging silver, lead free hassle, any one of these surface finishes, that is an additional adder. Hot air slot level is the original surface finish used on PCBs. Um, that is slowly phasing out of PCB processing. I do not see it phasing out um, as far as mil military ITAR work that's um, been produced for a long time. So high temperature materials is anything that is greater than 130 TG. We see a lot of 170 TG and a lot of 180 TG but not anything really in between. Once in a while, we'll get a request for a 150 TG. That causes us to go seek that material out to see if it would fit our process. Specific brands of material, such as Isola, Nelco, Rogers, Taconic, uh, Panasonic. These are all brand name materials. If you spe specify a specific brand, by its name, such as Rogers, that costs additional money to get that product in. So like I just said, not all suppliers will carry all flavors of laminate um, and certainly not carry all brands of laminate. So the absolute best way to specify what material you're going to use is to reference IPC 4101 IPC 4103 spec. These specifications have been set up to allow production suppliers to cross-reference materials that will fit your product. So such as IPC 4101-21, these other materials, slash 24, 26, 97, and so on, those are permissible substitutes that will meet the criteria of the slash 21, both in material properties and testing results as determined by IPC. So rather than call out a specific brand, referencing the slash number is the best way for your supplier to be able to get you what you need for your finished PCB. So, just one more thing on materials. It used to be that if you needed an RF microwave, high speed, high technology PCB, that the players in the market were co uh, companies such as Rogers. However, if you work closely with your manufacturing service, your supplier of your PCBs, you will find out that Isola has come out with some really good high speed brands that cost less per panel, they're more available, and we can get them to you in a quicker time frame than Rogers. So work with your fabricator on high-speed materials because there's some really good new ones out there. So just a quick recap of what we've already gone through, base costs, um, supply fabrication drawing notes, uh, what we would need from you, to calculate the base, the length and the width of the PCB or the array. So multi up single PCBs in a frame, uh, the longest dimension of that array as well we would need. Um, your overall thickness, your copper layer count, materials, copper weights and surface finish. Those are must haves to calculate a base price. Other things that we look for off the bat, impedance, uh, specified dielectrics, copper weights greater than two ounce, and your high temperature materials. 
So what else are we looking for when we look at the data set? Items such as binary vias, stack vias, via and pad process, plated slots, gold tabs, anything pertaining to out of the normal calculations. So because printed circuit boards are a specialty pro pro product, they're all different. We get them in all the time, thousands of sets a year, and they're all different. So they all have to be looked at as individual. There's no off the shelf price for any of these products. So other things that we look for that pop up quite frequently are plated edges and castellated holes which is just a fancy word for a hole that lands on the board edge that has plating. So what we look for is these special features, and then we add additional costs to produce them. And why do we do that? Because there's processes at the end for manufacturing that need to be done at the time the primary image is added to the board. So about midway, so if we have to drill holes along the edge as shown here, we will do that at primary drill. There's no change at this point. However, we may need to add some primary routing, which is when you drill along the edge with a router and cut a smooth channel such as this. If this were to have plating, it would need to be removed before the primary image, which also causes you to make a film swap to make sure the area will hold up in the process and to make sure the plating will be complete at the end. So adding all this extra engineering time, um, plating process time, drilling and cleaning, images that you may need, all adds up to cost. Another thing we look for is if there's any milling or excessive routing. So milling such as this, PCB shows here is done at the end of the process. So the PCB is completed. We go around the perimeter and add the routing of the shape and the size of the board. But we also have to do a control depth route to remove the material from the top side, partially through the board to expose whatever is underneath. In this case, it looks like we may be set assembling a component that needed some clearance to drop down below the board edge. So again, additional time for programming, engineering, additional equipment, the controlled depth routing, and additional processing. This board shows you what excessive routing could look like. So if you can imagine each channel shown in the pieces, so this is a single piece, they're all identical. The route would have to plunge at this point route across and down and stop, lift up, jump over the piece of material, which we reference as a tab and continue routing. So each time you make a routing change, you're lifting the drill up, moving to a new location and plunging down, a PCB such as this won't take minutes to route. It could take very many minutes. If there's a lot of panels, it could take days to route this many pieces out. Sometimes we could put it on one or two different machines, but it still adds time and consumes the process for the mechanical drilling. It, it will tie up the router to complete. So again, materials, labor, additional engineering, and tying up a piece of equipment to do the routing. <coughs> Sorry. Counterbore and countersink. These are two items that are very similar. We'll also talk about back drilling. So counterbore and countersink are drills that are plunged through the material to open up a portion of the PCB to allow for a screw head to be placed in the hole for mounting. Some of the time the counterbore is a plated process or the countersink. Uh, most of the time we see them, they are non-plated. So at this point, we have to review for processing time, if they're plated or non-plated, do we have the tool called out that is needed to complete the controlled hole size? Once we find all this out, 
hopefully we have the drill of it, or the route bit available and don't have to make a new purchase. Some of the times we have to go back to you and let you know that the depth and the angle or the size that you've called out will not work for production and can we use this other option. Back drilling is an alternative to producing a blind via. So the holes are primary drilled and then they are secondary drilled to remove the plating. There's more engineering time um, to come up with the programs for the primary drill and the secondary drilling. The PCBs see the drill process twice and there is a danger of scrapping. So if you don't control your drills or swap out your drills and pay attention to the process, you could drill down through to a layer that you shouldn't have. So there could be an added cost there. So in this photo, we see the difference between the counterbore and the counter sink. You can see that there's a right angle at the bottom of the hole here. There's an angle and a depth here where this is least common that we see the counter bore. This just shows you the screw inserted through the PCB. And to the last picture is shown is counter bores that go partially through the laminate. Again, more processing for the holes. So this is what a back drill looks like. Um, you primary drill the hole, plate it, get it all ready. It's at the end of the process. We have to add a secondary drill process to plunge and remove plating from the hole. Typically, we like the hole that we're over drilling to be 20. It gives you more room to play with, but we can do a 10 mil oversized hole. So if your via size is a 10 mil finish, we would like to drill that with a 20 mil. And if there's room, we would like to back drill it with a 30 mil, just to remove the plating partially through. And we're in about a three mil accuracy with um, drill to hole placement. So there's not a worry there, but it gives you a little bit more room to play with. So again, engineering, scrap risk, and labor. So cavity boards, um, they can be a little bit tricky to manage. The FR4 and polyimid material uh, is typically what is used. Um, we have setup processing for all the layers and all the routing. You can see where the board has different levels of plating to expose the metal underneath the layer. Um, there's ex extra engineering, there's additional films, there's setup and processing time to remove the material just like that we do in milling. Uh, there's plugging of holes that must be done. Um, there's a tight tolerance of plus or minus five mils for some of this work. And you have to be sure that you have all holes at least 0.100 away from the cavity edge. So again, additional labor, uh, a lot of engineering involved, and we have to use special materials if we must expose the copper partially down in the inner layers. So we'll have to buy additional different type of uh, prepreg that's either a no or a low reflow to prevent any residue from being left behind. Another process that we do is copper plated shut vias. This is a unique process that not many manufacturing services offer. Uh, there's a lot of price added to this type of PCB. Um, there's special equipment, special DC chemistries, you can only do it on certain size holes. So from six mils to 12 mils uh, is the single side that we can use. It has to have a 12 to one aspect ratio. So consult engineering with the board thickness to come up with what we can and can't do there. Uh, it can be up to 18 hours uh, to complete the plating process, but is a very low risk of voids or air gas or chemistries being trapped. Um, it's a great option. We do this only domestically in our facility in Texas. So vias, lots of different types of vias. Well, mostly we see uh, blind vias that go from either the top or the bottom to a mid internal layer. 
Uh, it's become more common over the last many years um, than it ever had been before. Um, and one of the things that we see more common is uh, multiple sets. So not just a little group of five that we need to do, there's multiple sets that will come in. We've seen up to 12 sets of blind ears come across. So blind are the most common. Buried vias are something we also see um, where the via is within the middle layers only. So like this via here, it only connects internally. You cannot see it from the top or the bottom. So pretty much you don't know it's there. Um, all of this via work is added additional engineering uh, review um, and different programs to produce them. Uh, extreme accuracy is needed uh, for your production floor, as well as x-ray to check out your blind and married vias. Stack vias, uh, we don't see this as much, um, but it does add costs. It's different uh, lamination cycles. Um, each via has to be addressed from the layer to layer, where it goes to, uh, it has to be plated. Um, and filled and planarized, and they're stacked on top of each other, which is a unique process. Um, and it does add many lamination cycles. And lamination cycles are when the PCB internal layers are sandwiched together through heat and press. So these are a couple of odd things that we see now and then. Um, and by odd, that means uh, they're not common, but they do add cost. Um, one of them is a jump score or jump V score. Um, adds time for programming and for processing. Um, you can see in this photo here, it's when the cut through the top of the board stops short of the edge of the PCB, um, which allows the, the array to remain more rigid during the assembly process. And once it's complete, it can still be snapped off because the cut goes from top to bottom all the way to the edge of the board. So this is additional programming um, for engineering to do. It's additional labor for uh, the floor to manage to make sure that it's stopping and starting where it's supposed to. Um, the cuts are done simultaneously, uh, but it does add extra time with the stop and the start of the score blade. Uh, peelable masks, such as this PCB down here. Um, it doesn't have a lot of area, usually, that the mask covers. So in, in small uh, volume applied to the PCB, the peelable mask has a shelf life that's limited. So some of the times we have to buy a container of it, apply it to the board, then we don't get more boards for that order. Uh, so you have a risk of it going bad we usually don't calculate peelable mask as a cost for the container, but it does cost us because it's such a low volume. And not many manufacturers offer peelable mask anymore. Um, combined surface treatments, uh, such as this final picture, shows immersion gold solder surfaces and plated via holes, but it also has um, Gold, gold plated fingers, which is a thicker copper, a thicker plating surface of gold um, to allow that edge connector to be slid in and out of the contact area and it won't wear down. We also have carbon ink requests still um, that are applied to the surface and you will see them under like uh, keypad contacts. So if you were to take apart a remote control, for example, there could be a gold surface under there under the keys that you press to change your channels or it could be a carbon ink or some other uh, hard surface and then any pig um, is a cost adder that we've seen quite more frequently uh, the electroless nickel immersion um, palladium and immersion gold uh, does add cost and it's not something that we uh, apply to boards daily, weekly, sometimes even monthly, because it costs so much money to start up that line for the, the gold and the palladium. Um, 
we don't run it all the time. So that could add lead time to your cost and your, your order. So that was a lot of information. I hope you caught most of it. Um, just to go over a quick summary, uh, PCB cost starts the same way with each part. Um, and even though they're all a unique design and we build them to print, they are all different. So knowing what we need to give you base costs and also the details uh, for the extra adders, um, if you call them out on your drawing, that's best for us. That way we won't miss anything. Uh, so like I said, PCBs are built to print and no two are exactly alike, but we do get revisions some of the time and those up revs uh, a lot of the time stay the same, but we still have to come up with new pricing. Um, so engineering and production, uh, it's best to review some of these uh, special features such as blind and buried vias. Um, or impedance controls at the beginning of your process. Uh, during engineering, design and layout stage is a great place to start looking and asking questions about your design. Um, some of the things that we look for in our DFM process, which is a free service at Epic, um, are these kinds of items. And to give you the best advice from our engineering staff uh, to help you make changes that will uh, evidently uh, save you some cost. So like I said, the DFM um, service is free. Uh, you can get to it online at our website and we can help you with stack ups and cost saving and material choices. So using a trusted supplier um, with a large supply chain that can build this type of product uh, domestically and offshore uh, for best cost delivery and a quality product, um, is best. Uh, it definitely uh, helps you out to have the services that Epic has with DFM and our supply chain. Thank you, Angie. And while Angie reviews the questions that came in, I wanted to briefly mention some of the additional PCB-based products we offer here at Epic. Uh, custom battery packs, flex and rigid flex PCBs, cable assemblies, CNC machining through our sister company, Metalcraft Machining, high, reliable, high reliability user interfaces, flexible heaters, and our energy efficient fans and motors. Next slide, please. And I'll turn it back over to Angie to go through some of the questions that came in. Thank you, sir. Um, so we had quite a few questions come in. I'm going to go over just a few of them. Um, so one of the questions was, what is the added time needed for blind and buried vias? Um, so because this is a unique process, and like I said, from blind vias go from the top, the top or the bottom to a mid layer, um, and buried are strictly inside of mid layers. Uh, it really depends on how many sets you have if they go from the top and the bottom side to mid layers, if they're uh, sets within the inner layers. So it really depends if you can minimize the number of sets that you use, if you can keep to one side or the other, um, that will help. It, I can't really tell you uh, the time needed for it because it really depends on how many sets there are. Um, another question we had was, can I have different copper weights on the layers? Uh, so the short answer to that is yes. Um, internal layers, you can have unbalanced copper from side to side of the core. So for a six layer, you have the top and the bottom, but you have core layer two and three and core layer four and five. So for core layer three, you could have a half ounce and layer four, uh, uh, sorry, for layer two, you could have a half ounce and layer three, you could have one ounce. That's what we call a mixed copper. So half ounce on one side, one ounce on the other side. Uh, the process is a little different for it because you're etching through to the laminate surface um, at a different rate of speed because um, you're removing copper from both sides at the core at the same time. So it can be done on inner layers. 
We don't recommend unbalanced copper on external layers for that reason. Uh, it is more difficult to process that way. Um, so sticking to the same copper weight on outer layers is, is best. Uh, so another question was, what material is used for cavity PCBs and is there a lead time for it? Um, so cavity boards, uh, pretty much any type of core can be used for a cavity bore, but a board, but not Teflon or PTFE. Um, and if you have to have exposed internal metal, we must use the no or the low uh, reflow prepregs uh, to get the material to remove um, with an acrylic adhesive. So it's important to know uh, what it is that you expect the, the cavity to do. So exposed metal or not. Um, another question was, what is the quickest lead time on high technology PCBs? So again, that is something to be determined by looking at the data set, uh, depending on how many layers it is, how many PCBs it is, uh, what the attributes that we just talked about for the PCB are. Um, we have done pretty much plain Jane vanilla 10 layer boards in three to five days, um, but we really need to look at the data set to give you the true answer of that on high tech PCBs. Uh, let's see, let's look at one more. What is the best way to, to keep costs lower? Um, so one of the things that you can look at uh, if you are developing a high technology PCB and you are thinking of using the blind and buried vias, um, that, that process there does add time and cost to uh, manufacturing. Uh, you may want to have uh, use Epix free DFM and talk to an engineer about possibly changing it from say an eight layer to a 10 layer. Uh, so adding a layer inside of the stack up is sometimes uh, a lesser cost than doing the blind and buried uh, via process. Well, I think that's about all I have time for today to uh, answer. Our questions, if you did ask some questions and I didn't uh, go over them, we'll definitely get back to you with um, replies. I wanna thank everybody for logging in and, and joining us on our webinar. I appreciate your time. I know time is valuable to everybody. So thank you again. Have a wonderful afternoon and a great weekend.